Hi, I'm M from 21 Readers. Today I'm doing an unboxing for a Goodreads book that I won from a giveaway and then it'll turn into a reading vlog. I won Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. All right, here we go. Here it is, Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty, releasing on September 14th. On sale September 2021, September 14th. Okay, let's see what the note says. It says, congratulations on winning a copy of Apples Never Fall on Goodreads, the highly anticipated new novel from number one New York Times bestseller Leanne Moriarty, looks at siblings, marriage, and how the people we love the most can hurt us the deepest. And then it, has a plot summary, which I'm not going to read because I don't like reading plot summaries because I want to go in not knowing much. And then it says, what hashtag do you use? Hashtag apples never fall. So my history with Leanne Moriarty, I've only read one of her books, Nine Perfect Strangers, and I actually just recently reread it for the show. Nine Perfect Strangers was definitely a mix of mystery thriller with contemporary fiction. This one seems like it could be similar, like contemporary fiction, family dynamics, and also like some type of mystery element involved. Oh, okay. So it's 480 pages and in my head I was thinking I could read this all in one weekend, but then remembering that her books are on the longer side, it probably isn't going to happen in just one weekend. Today's a Saturday, but we'll see. I'm not going to put any pressure on myself for how long I'm going to take to read it so that I'm not feeling forced to pick it up or forced to finish it, but I'll tell you more about what it's about once I've started it. Okay, I already have an update, even though I only read the prologue. So already the apples have been introduced as a metaphor. The tone is definitely like dark and mysterious and the themes that I thought we were gonna have with Apples Never Fall of like history repeating itself and like generations repeating itself is already, you can tell, gonna be an underlying theme just from the short prologue. All right, stay tuned. Update time. I am on page 129, which is chapter 17, and that's about 25% of the way through Apples Never Fall. And now I can actually tell you what it's about. So it follows four adult siblings whose mother has gone missing, and there's two timelines we're following. We're following present day and the year before. The year before chapters are told from the different family members' perspectives and we're learning more about each of the people in this family and the current day chapters where the mom has disappeared are told from like outsider perspectives such as an uber driver a waitress a housekeeper so the current day chapters that's more of the like mystery element of like what happened to the mom and then the previous year's chapters is more of the like contemporary fiction type chapters where we're learning more about the family drama we're learning more about everybody's backstories things that they're hiding from each other is history repeating itself apples never fall so i feel like i've learned a lot about like three out of the four adult siblings but the oldest daughter i haven't gotten to read her chapters yet so i'm assuming hers is coming soon with the siblings backstories i feel like we're learning a lot about their adult life and their childhood life so i'm definitely wondering how things from their childhood are affecting them in adulthood and I also am kind of liking the underlying conversations about like adult children caring for their elderly parents and siblings who were close in childhood, how those relationships have evolved into adulthood. I feel like that we've kind of hit on those two topics so far and I think we'll dive even deeper to those topics. For the chapters in the past, there are two things happening to this family. One involves tennis and one involves a guest. I'm guessing is going to be why the mom has disappeared. As for the pacing, I feel like it's going by fast. Since this is nearly 500 pages, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about the length, but 
I'm a fourth of the way through and I feel like it went by pretty fast. I think that the bouncing back and forth of who we're focusing on is helping with the pace too. We're not just focusing on one person. So I'm not sure how much more reading I'm gonna get done tonight on this one. I think I'm gonna watch the new Apple TV film called Coda tomorrow on Sunday. I definitely plan on getting through a large chunk of this. Update time, it's Sunday afternoon and I am halfway through Apples Never Fall. I'm on page 240, which is chapter 29. I'm still enjoying it. The main things I'm enjoying about it are learning more about the four siblings. We're learning about their current life circumstances, we're learning about their childhoods, we're learning about them psychoanalyzing their current relationships and comparing it to their parents' relationship. The siblings have also been reflecting on how they were raised and things that they thought was all rosy from their childhood, they're now taking a minute to be like, oh wait, maybe this affected me emotionally in this way, or the way that I processed my emotions as a child is manifesting this way as an adult, and it's hindering my adult relationships in this way. And I think that's fascinating to read about. I like hearing them like psychoanalyze themselves and learn more about how their memories of childhood are kind of evolving once they think more critically of them. And something I was thinking about while reading this middle part is that in this other book that was popular this summer, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, that was something that I wish we had gotten more of, is learning more about the sibling dynamics. And that's something that's very strong here. This is doing a great balance of learning about all four of them. So I would definitely say that the contemporary fiction was the main focus of the 25% through the 50% mark, not so much the mystery part of it. We haven't really made any headway with the mystery. I definitely thought we would have learned more about the mystery now that we're halfway through. However, in the mystery part of it, we're now mainly learning about the mystery through the lens of the detectives working on the case of where their adult mother is. I am enjoying the time I'm spending with this family. And speaking of family, last night I watched the new film on Apple TV Plus called Coda. It was an absolutely beautiful film and beautiful story about a family. I would say it's my favorite film of the year so far. So if you have Apple TV Plus, I would recommend it. I do think it would be worth using an Apple TV Plus free trial to watch Coda because it was that emotionally compelling. And I feel like this morning I've just been thinking about that film all day and also of course the family members in this book. update time. I have finished Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. First, I'll start with the positives. I really liked reading about the adult siblings' dynamics, learning about what's going on in their heads, their relationship with each other, their complicated relationship with their parents, them thinking back on their childhood and analyzing it. I really enjoyed getting in these four adult siblings' head and reading about their complicated lives. That is definitely going to be what sticks with me the most long after I have now finished the book. In that regard, I would say like the contemporary fiction family drama side of the book was the strongest part for me. So where it was just average for me was the mystery. I do feel like the mystery was average. I feel like that part, I'm not going to remember that much. The twist was just fine for me. I would say if I'm comparing this one to Nine Perfect Strangers, the mystery part was better in Nine Perfect Strangers than Apples Never Full, but the contemporary fiction character-driven character study was better in this one than in Nine Perfect Strangers. If you're in it just for the mystery, this one might be worth skipping, but if you're interested in a mystery where the main focus is learning about the backstories of all the characters, then I would recommend this one. Something I was thinking about, like tying it to other things that I've consumed, so my favorite part of the show This Is Us that I used to watch, I don't watch anymore, my favorite scenes in This Is Us were always the scenes between the three adult children so it kind of reminded me of why I like this one is the sibling connections and them talking about their childhoods them talking about their relationship with their parents 
Then I was thinking about how I read the book Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina and I wish this one had done more with the sibling dynamics and sibling drama. I think that part was kind of just breezed over to focus on the mystery, whereas this one went all in on diving into the siblings, whereas the mystery was more of a backseat, and I think I preferred that style with this one. So if reading about adult siblings and their complicated relationships with each other and with their parents, then I would totally recommend this one. Also, if this theme with apples never falling of like generations repeating mistakes or breaking the trend intrigues you, then that's definitely the central theme here, like the title promises. If you're only interested in the mystery element, then this one's just going to be like an average mystery. So it seems like Leanne Moriarty is having like a big fall with Nine Perfect Strangers coming out on Hulu and now her new novel coming out this fall. Tell me in the comments what your favorite Leanne Moriarty book is. And for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.